Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. My RC car clawed buster build from Tamiya. The black edition is behind the black curtain. I haven't looked at it in eight months. The last video I uploaded was the last build session that I've had with it. And I've been busy, but that's not to say I haven't been doing some RC car stuff. This is something I picked up at our local Princess Auto surplus, kind of a discount thing, kind of like Harbor Freight. This is a two-wheel drive truck. That's it. It's a truck. Some of the features are a, a Matal transmission shaft, rubber tires, 25 amp electronic speed control, metal drive cups, a metal A-arm, we'll find out about that a little bit later, and a metal shield shock absorber. It's 112 scales, ready to run, 2.4 gigahertz radio system. It comes with a 1500 milliamp 7.4 volt lithium ion battery and a USB charger. All you need to run this thing is three AA batteries for the transmitter. So we're going to take a very close look at this thing, whether you should spend your hard earned money on this regular price, 99, 99 Canadian dollars, 99 dollars, 99 cents Canadian dollars, plus your taxes. I got it on sale for 49, no, 39.99 a few weeks ago. So we're going to take a look at this thing. Stick around after the running to see what this thing is made of, where you can get uh, any kind of replacement parts and whether this truly is a hobby grade RC car. Let's check out the Princess Auto truck. This is a 112th scale two-wheel drive remote control or radio control truck from Princess Auto. It is made in China, imported by Princess Auto. The UPC is 9029323. Go through some features here. The big thing is 36 plus kilometers per hour two-wheel drive, ages 14 plus. It is IPX4. Waterproof level. It protects itself from splashing water and waves. It's uh, okay. It's it's a car. So features on the top here: 25 amp electronic speed control, a 390 size motor, lithium ion, 7.4 volt, 1500 milliamp battery, two wheel drive, metal shock absorber, and a 2.2 kilogram high torque steering servo. On this side, we side we have uh, French, all in French, ready to run. Provide a variety of color choices. The height is 154 millimeters. It is 270 millimeters wide with a 38 millimeter ground clearance. Ah, uh, some more features: 112 scale, ready to run, 2.4 gigahertz radio system we've got a metal drive cups we got uh, all in capital letters metal shield shock absorber metal a arm that's a cross brace but whatever 25 amp speed controller rubber tires and a, a matal transmission shaft so this is chock full of uh, spelling mistakes okay let's get into the real stuff here so we got a an included radio, of course, and the front wheels are spinning here. I, I don't know how I did that, but that's okay. So we've got uh, A is the power switch, B is the steering trim, and C is the throttle trim. Low speed to high speed. So that sounds like an uh, endpoint adjustment, where the further you go to the right, the further you can pull the trigger uh, electronically. So we've got a DC brushed electric motor, speed up to 36 plus kilometers an hour. Scales 112th, 60 meter remote range, operation time up to 20 minutes. We'll check that. Rubber tires, sealed ball bearings, four wheel independent suspension system is on the next line. That's okay. 2.4 gigahertz stuck protection. I'm going to assume that that's some type of um, overcurrent protection, maybe. Charging pressure limiting protection. I assume that is an uh, um, automatic charger, like a peak charger for the lithium-ion battery. 
over discharge protection, thermal protection on PCB. Okay, 1500 milliamp car battery, and that's rechargeable, lithium ion. The remote control runs on three AA batteries that are not included. This is suitable for children above 14 years old. I think I fall in that category. I mean, it looks nice. That's a nice looking truck on the box and it, it really is just truck. That's it. Variety of colors. This is the blue one in the variety of colors. Uh, okay. And that's, uh, that's the chassis there. So let's, uh, let's get a look at this, shall we? Right, tape shut on this side. We're going to need a knife. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So this kind of reminds me of a little bit of a hobby grade. Oh, there's the manual right off. We'll take a look at the manual in a moment. So we'll set that aside. Nice little hole here to slide this out. And in here we have some stuff. Let's get a look at this in here first. This is the transmitter. It's, uh, okay, that's a physical switch. So you press it, it's on, off, steering trim, throttle trim. Those are the three things. I need three AA batteries for the, for the transmitter. Let's set that aside. What else is in here? Oh, some goodies. What do you got? What do we have in this little package here? This is our USB powered battery charger. What does it say on there? It says input 5 volts, 2 amps, output 7.4 volts at 1.3 amps. So that should take just a little bit more than an hour to charge the battery. And also inside this little package is this looks like a wheel nut wrench it's a strange looking wheel nut wrench but there is a wheel nut wrench um, regardless and then four body pins i assume that there's body pins on the body as well but those are four now the nice thing about these body pins is they are they're bent up they're mini they're a little bit smaller than what you would see on a, on a tent scale rc hobby shop car uh, they are, but they are bent, so they're easier to take out. That's nice. Set those aside. We don't need this anymore. We don't need this anymore. Let's get a look at the RC truck. Okay. Set the box aside here. What's going on here? Ah, we're wire tied in. All right. Let's get those wire ties out of there. What do we have to do that with? Try cutting them out first, and then if we can't cut them out, we'll get a... There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Here it is. The RC truck. Okay, it does actually have a brand name on the Wow, those are, that is a floppy truck. All right, well, it's got suspension, but that's a, full, that's a floppy truck. Look at that floppy truck. That's, that's something. What was that? Was that a hair? There is. Yuck, there's a hair on it. Ew. It's not even, I don't know if you guys can't see that, obviously, but there's a hair on it. That's kind of gross. That, oh, no, it's not a hair. Maybe it is. I think it's plastic. Okay. So here it is, the Wild Challenger Turbo. It has a name. Wild Challenger Turbo. It says New Storm, Super Racer Pick, Supersonic, 
Spider, Supersonic on the front, Drift Racing, the Shark Bay. And on this side, it's all the same. Let's get a look at the back here. Supersonic. Oh, oh, well, that's interesting. Look at that. There is uh, an overspray on the body, an overspray film. You'd get this in a, in a hobby shop RC car. This must be for shipping so it, it doesn't arrive damaged and scratched. That's nice. You would have that on, a, on most, uh, most hobby, car, hobby shop cars. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Let's get a look under the hood, though. That's what I really want to look at. See what is under here. Okay, so you get eight in total. And we'll take the we'll take that film off. Whoa! This thing is entirely encased. I can't see anything. It looks like now oh, we got some LED lights in the front there behind these grills. That's kind of cool. That's neat. And then a little antenna poking up there. I guess this is where the battery is. I haven't seen the battery yet. Come on. Okay. Ah, this is a hobby grade connector. This is a T plug or also known as Dean's. It's um, a T plug because of the shape of the uh, shape of the connector. There's can't plug them in backwards or anything. Okay. So that looks like it goes back to the motor there. And then everything else is covered up under the front. So the steering servo and whatnot is up under there. Let's get a look at these metal A-arms. Yeah, that's not an A-arm at all. That is 100% just a connect. Oh, geez, this is... Woo! She's quite a thing. Let me tell you. That's a... That's quite a thing, indeed. Okay, that's fine. Got some uh, some honeycomb structure in there, and uh, let's unplug this. Hmm, can't get that. There we go. Okay, perfect. We are going to. You know what? Let's get this plugged in uh, to the charger so we can uh, we can at least start charging our. Aurora huge capacity. There's the other thing too. That's, that's an Aurora huge capacity lithium ion 7.4. That, that'd be two 18650s up in there for sure. So it's got a balance plug on there to charge through, and then your discharge plug is the is the T plug. So let's get this plugged in and uh, see what that's all about. And then we're going to take this apart a little bit. Okay, so to charge this, I'm going to use my desktop USB power. Uh, I'm going to plug this USB power um, power meter in here. That's what I'm going to do. And this USB power meter will tell me how much it's pulling out. So we'll unwrap our charger, which is very very tightly wound in here and that's fine we'll get her we'll see if this pulls the three amps that are two amps that it says it's going to pull out of a five volt charger i'll plug this in here no lights or anything show up on that yet i'll plug it in here okay we got lights so we got green light flashing, pulling 1.3 amps, and a red light in there. So we'll set that aside, let it charge, and we'll get a good look inside. The Wild Challenger Turbo. Let's see what there is. First thing, let's check out these. this tool. We're going to see how this works. Take a look inside here at the sealed ball bearings. Take a look in here. All right, so this is a nylon lock nut. Okay, so it's got a normal hex. Let's check, see what size hex that is. That is 12, mil, 12 millimeter hex. Very good. That. I believe is a standard in hobby grade RC cars. 
let's get a look at this metal shock okay so it is not metal the cap is metal and the bottom cap is metal the spring is metal but the body is not the body is actually uh it's just uh, plastic all right behind Ooh, that's on there pretty tight wow what the heck that won't come off i'm gonna have to pry that off what And it's obviously a pin in there. Holy jumpins, that's on there hard. On there tight. There we go. Okay. So that is a metal hex. I don't know why it was on there so tight. That is a that is a metal hex right there. 12 millimeters. And then you're drive shaft pins right here the drive shaft pin let's find out what this is this drive shaft pin is nine point six so oh, we'll say ten millimeters and one point nine four so two millimeters ten by two millimeters And there is our that doesn't look sealed to me does that look sealed to you that doesn't look sealed to me that does not look sealed to me does that look sealed to you i don't think so so is there bearings there's a bearing on the inside too and these are the metal drive cups so it does have metal drive cups and uh it's got metal drive cups coming on the transmission too but uh, how do we get into that transmission easily? We'll try. We'll try and get into that transmission and see what happens. So I think we're done with this. We validated that it has... It definitely has bearings. Okay, so that, that seems strange. That just went on real easy and it was real bare to get off. Okay. So, let's put this back together. These are included. Wheel nut wrench. Those are, hmm, I think those are 5 millimeter. Okay, everything's working good there. It's a gear differential for sure. Give that a spin. That's definitely, oh wow, that spins for a long time. Good stuff. That's great. Let's get a look inside. See what components are in here. See if they're replaceable. And this is, that's hot glue. It's black hot glue string. It's not hair. Okay, that's fine. If you look at the servo and the speed control in here. Take off all of this covering here. Once we get in here, we'll have a look at the manual as well. Whoa, that goes all the way to the bottom. That's long. All right, let's set these aside in a certain way so we know which way they go back in. So that one goes there. And this one goes here. And there's two more. I'll get a look at the receiver and speed control. It's odd to me to have the speed control uh, buried, completely covered. We'll see how, see what it looks like. Now it's under this cover here. 
Oh, two more I have to take out right here. There's a significant disassembly to get to the speed control. Okay, so that goes here. I'm just taking these and setting them to the side in a place that makes sense to me. So I know where they go. Okay, here we go. We're in. We are. Maybe? There we go. What the heck? Oh my gosh, that is not a steering servo. Look at that thing. What the heck is that? That's a 180 motor that that goes into what the heck? That is the weirdest. That is not standard. You cannot upgrade that. We don't have anything like that. That is weird. Look at that. Wow. That's nuts. Holy. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in a steering servo setup. Holy. Oh my gosh. Crazy. So here's our waterproof speed control. Can I, can I get that out? No, I can't. Well, let's get a look at it. That's not waterproof. That's not waterproof at all. Holy jumpins. And how many... There are... One, two, three, four, five wires on the, on the steering control input. What the heck? That's unreal. Wow. Huh. That's just unreal. Let's try and pry that speed control out of there. It only matters if it breaks, right? But it's nice to have it replaceable. So I'm going to check to see in the manual here in a little bit to see what is that replaceable. Can you buy another one? I might break it here when I try and pry it out because that is... Oh, that's not designed to come out. No, sir. Wow. Holy. I don't know what this is at all. This is just... You can't replace this. This is... Like, I mean, you could replace it if you got it from the same... There's, there it is. Okay. 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 There we go. Okay. So, it's silicone coated. I can't get... I get the motor out from there. Okay, let's get a look. So it is silicone. It is covered in silicone here. Okay, it's covered all over with silicone. So that's their that's their solution to uh, waterproofing is to uh, coat the speed control. That says Lansu S and T, manufactured November fifteenth, twenty twenty. And the, the part number is LS-XLH222E-2.4GR, version 1.0. And that is your speed control. That's, that's toy grade. Okay, well, I mean, it was, it was only $40. So... But currently, it is $100. So that's quite a thing, that's what that is. You definitely get what you pay for, and you are out purchasing radio control stuff. Okay, so if that stops working, that is not something you can buy from anywhere else but the company that made this. I don't, I think. I think that's it. You're, you're buying it from here. That's it. So... Not really ideal if I'm if I'm being honest. It's it's not ideal. So let's get a look at where our 390 size motor is in the back here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six screws to get the cover off that. That's uh, that's something, guys. This was uh, this was 100% worth buying just to see. 
what's in here I, should i take apart the differential i think i should i think we should gut this thing and have a good look inside it shouldn't be that hard to do i haven't looked inside the manual yet we'll see if there's any parts breakdown or explosion in there exploded view to to give you an idea of what to expect but i don't want to ruin the surprise i totally want to go through this and see what is inside the wild challenger turbo supersonic rc truck from princess auto imported by princess auto let's see what's inside here it's got decent wire gauge going to the motor so that's not too bad that's kind of promising looks like all the screws are uh, approximately the same size one thing i don't like about the uh, the design this is kind of like a bathtub chassis so the bathtub chassis isn't aren't ideal for when you have issues uh, related to water so water can just pool up in here and if you if you don't drain it you're going to have problems so here are covers this is the front cover and then the battery cover which just comes off with a couple of things and this is the motor cover here and you can see there's lots of cooling built in here uh, for the motor but man there's no cooling for the speed control either and it's packed in there so tight with that super weird steering setup that's just strange man strange okay whatever all right should we take this out i feel like this wouldn't oh okay so you've got um the motor's kind of replaceable like you can uh, undo your oh they're not even covered okay interesting let's get this off then okay i'm going to take this right apart before we even run it really give her a good going over shall we so to remove the entire back i think it's just these four screws here to take out the whole motor assembly in the back that's not that's not horrible to be honest that's that's pretty easy to maintain so let's do that let's get a look in here looks like there might be a couple there so these are recessed screws the other ones are all button head screws and I'm sure that these screws need to come out too it's probably yeah they're all the same size okay Oh, she just fell apart. Great. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Here we go. So, let's see what's on here. Nothing. Okay, and that did, those two screws did hold the front motor in there. All right. Having a look at this. There is our differential. And there's some grease in there moving the motor that's good so this is um coming out from one into another one into a shaft into here and then there's two gears that go to the back okay okay could have made that a little more simple but there it is so how do we get that apart hmm oh got grease on my fingers now all right, this is going to take a while to take apart. I don't think I want to. Um, just, I don't think I want to. We'll check the manual and see if there's a parts explosion, but I don't, I don't want to take it apart much further than this. But what we will do, and what I will do, is I'm going to take off this wheel, which will give us better access to the transmission. We'll take the motor housing off. The battery's charging anyway. What else do we have to do? All right, so that gives us better access to the motor. So let's take the motor off. Let's see what kind of 390. This is definitely not a 380 motor. I think it is actually a 390 size motor. 
So this should release the motor, I think. No, these are not machine screws. So those, these are four screws that just hold uh, the gear cover on. There, we can get into here. I still can't believe the electronics setup that, that it's cheaper to to create your own um, oh gears look at the wow wow it's a ball bearing transmission that's 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 not what I was expecting so you get a metal gear here and there's, there's some grease in there it doesn't seem to really be on any of the gears but there's some grease in here and uh what's the weird blistering on this gear that's weird you guys see that it's like weird blistering on it that's strange and you get a oh there's a bearing in there too what about here? There's a bearing on that shaft. Those are small bearings, man. That's a small bearing. What size is that bearing? Let's find out. Let's find out what size that bearing is. That looks like a 2.5. So that's probably a 5 millimeter in the middle, is it? No, that's a 4 millimeter. And I don't want to take it out, so I'm going to guess. So it's four by six. Yeah, four by six ish. That's something. Holy, that's that's uh, that's something. Okay, so uh, let's put that back in there. And then this super weird gear here that's got like a really crazy looking. gear here too and this gear yeah, takes it and puts it over to the other one so let's it's um wow that is crazy so if it's gonna fail it's gonna fail deep in there you know it's gonna be this thing here or something so let's that went back together nice and easy and we'll put these four screws back into the gear cover oh so screws hanging out with me Okay, let's put this back together. Okay, there's only four screws. They're going pretty easy too. Yeah. Didn't take the motor out though. Can you get the motor out? I didn't look. I was so excited to see that crazy transmission set up with one, two, three, four, five, six gigs. <laughs> six gears that holy okay let's get these all out here oh no i got it let me get a look at this motor forgot to do that should i take it all the way out doesn't look like that motor is gonna go through there does that have a pinion Rub screw on it looks like it might no it's pressed on okay so this is not replaceable either let's get a look at it why not we'll get right in here for you the viewer let's see what's in here okay these are machine screws non-adjustable gear ratio and not adjustable gear mesh all right, let's get a look at her. Ooh. All right. So this is a bushing motor. Oh, weird. Look at that. That's strange, isn't it? That says Lansu. That's a LSGM 02-motor. <laughs> okay. What is that? I forget what makes it a 390 motor. Is it the... The length. Whoa, that went to zero. What the heck? There. Okay, the can size is 
47. This is 390-4537. And the can diameter, 28. 27 or 28 millimeters. And how do you get 290 out of this, you guys? Like, what's the 290 part? What's the 540 part? I don't even know. And that's 64. Okay. Sure. I don't know what makes that a 390 at all. But that is the most of the transmission. And I don't want to take it apart any further. So let's try and get it back together now. That should be lined up. These are the only two screws that are machine screws so far. I'm going to plop these back in. And reassemble the entire transmission. It's not the entire transmission, but I just don't want to take apart the rest of it. I could. I could. There are. What well, holds it together, by the way? So there's one screw here, one screw here, and then the rest of it is uh, these two screws here, because the seam is there, these two screws here, these two screws here, and then these two screws here. So there's, yeah, yeah, you're like six, uh, are those, yeah, those are on there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws to get into, uh, no, it's two more screws there. Okay. Not doing it. I'm not doing it. Let's start with the shock tower. Set these screws aside. They only fit in the shock tower. Those are loose. Remove the two screws from the bumper. These are countersunk and they are the same size as the screws from the bottom. So if you can keep them stuck in there, do that. Then we're going to take the top hinge pin out. This one is shorter than the bottom. Whoa! This one is shorter than the bottom. Let's take that one out, set it aside. Take the longer hinge pin out. At the bottom control arm, set that aside. Take the stiffener out. the right side and set it aside. Take the other stiffener out. And set it aside. Flip it over so you're looking at the bottom. Your dog bone will fall out so take your dog bone and set it aside. Remove the front stiffener screw. This is on the right side. Set these all together. And take the fourth stiffener. Screw out. And set that to the side. And you can rotate these away to release the other side. Take your axle, set it aside. So to separate the two transmission halves, it's these four screws. One, two, three, four. And you see this screw is the reason we needed to take this upper arm off because it's hidden behind the, uh, the arm. So these are longer. Make sure when you take these out, 
you set them aside. These four screws are all the same. Here is your transmission. So remove the right side of the transmission half, set it aside. The screw stayed inside the transmission, so that's fine. Inspect for any damage inside the transmission. This is your differential. I don't know what they call this gear, but that's another gear. This gear comes through from the other side. In order to remove this, I believe you need to take the gear cover off on the other side. So we'll do that now. That's these four screws. So that's that transmission uh, gear, and then there's the metal transmission gear in there as well. So that is the entire transmission disassembled. So we'll set this aside and we'll see what's inside the gear transmission. Where are you? So we need to take out these four screws here. are also these are metal planetary gears that's cool it's my first look inside here there are and they are very well lubricated too just to reassemble this it's the opposite Put these four screws in they are countersunk there we go that was pretty easy to put back in and all these ball bearings, man. To me, it doesn't even put in ball bearings in most of their vehicles. But this this one for $100. Yeah, 
kind of cheap. I think I bought it for $39.99 is what I paid for it a few weeks ago. I just haven't had time to to make this video. But I'm glad that uh, glad I'm taking it apart first because once this is dirty, it wouldn't be as much fun to take apart and look at. I wonder, and I was going to test the waterproof functionality to see how waterproof it was, but now that I know I can't replace the speed control in it because it's all in one, I'd have to replace the speed control. Well, the, <laughs> the uh, steering system is virtually unserviceable, uh, in my opinion, anyway. Okay, that's, that's it. So now I need to put the six screws back in the bottom. And I think, I think this little bumper came out too. I think this little bumper was in here, I believe. Yes, it was, because it takes up this little, this little lip on the, uh, the back of the chassis here. So this little bumper has to be in there to take that up. And I'm going to assume, oh, I'm going to assume that I'm putting it in wrong. It should be this direction is there. No, it's on this side. Put it on the wrong side. There we go. Okay. Let's put this back together now. So six screws does take the entire back of the chassis out. Let's put these screws in first, I think. Pro tip from homies out there, before you start screwing these in, you want to try and get them in the same threads that were already cut. So you can, um, to do that, you first put the screw inside the hole, thread your screwdriver, and then you turn it backwards and you'll feel a little step. You can feel it, can't hear it usually, but you feel it, and then you can just thread it in. And it should take almost no effort to slide back in there. So that's my tip for all you RC noobs out there. Go backwards. I learned this from Gary at Great Hobbies years ago. Because if you are into servicing your car frequently and disassembling and reassembling frequently, uh, if you cut new threads, eventually you will not be able to tighten the screw inside the plastic and you'll have to replace the piece of plastic that it threads into. In this case, it would be both halves of the transmission assembly if they're available separately too because this is kind of a toy grade thing they may not they may sell this as one assembly okay so that's that let's get this wheel back on before we get too much further and we we'll use our terrific wheel nut wrench where's my wheel nut though Ha! How did that happen? Ooh, is that getting hot? Ooh, it's getting pretty hot. Weird, I don't see my wheel nut. There it is. How big are these wheel nuts, though? I'm, I said they were five millimeters. Does this actually show me what size this is? Mm, seven. Seven millimeters. I'll use this instead of the factory one there we go okay so those are nylon locking nuts though which is nice mandatory really okay so we'll get back into here and we'll reinstall the motor they are bullet connectors who put that one in there wrong there okay it's good all right they are bullet connectors what size bullet connectors are they i'm going to say they are uh 2.5 mil maybe three Oh, I'm wrong. Three millimeters, 3.3, maybe 3.5. Is that how they, yeah. 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors for the motor, which is uh, probably fine for a 390 size motor, I would think. Now, when I took this out, the shielding was pushed back. And I'm gonna put it back in there so that it's not pushed back because it could potentially short out inside the, the motor housing there so I'll tuck that back in its little motor channel with a slotted screwdriver that's actually nice motor wire that's silicone motor wire it's not uh, not super cheap stuff so get that in there come on buddy here we go that 
it's back in its channel. The only thing I don't like about this is if you were to put the screw in there and pinch the wire, you could short them out. So that's fine now. Get that in there. The front too, so I'm going to have to take it out. That looks good. I did cross the wires, but I'm sure that'll be fine. So let's put the motor cover back on. So we're finished with that. And that's fine. Let's get the, there we go. So I'm using a, to me, a tool set to do the work on this. They are JIS screwdrivers. They seem to fit these screws fairly well. So either these are JIS or it's close enough. I doubt they're JIS because it's uh, JIS is Japanese industry standard. But they seem to fit okay. I feel like maybe six screws is a little overkill to put this on, especially considering there's no like O-ring on it or anything. I'll put this back in here like that. There we go. And then this one goes in here. And that'll be our six. That's our fifth screw. I guess the nice thing is for uh, for it keeps um, the motor away from touching it because if it gets hot and the motor is exposed then you could potentially burn yourself on it if it gets hot enough. Okay, let's put on the speed control and get the little antenna that's going to go up through the hole there. There we go. And we'll put those four back in there. Make sure there's no pinched wires. Looks like we're good. And the two long ones went in these ones here. I wonder if we should pull a shock off and get the real experience of having of um, those kind of plastic body. They're friction shocks. They're not oil oil filled. And the rest of these screws. There are eight screws to take the speed control cover off. But honestly, if you have something go wrong, you're, you're probably throwing this out anyway, unfortunately. Um, unless the manual's got parts. We'll open up the manual and see if the, the manual got, has parts. And then I'll even check on the internet to see if there are any search results for the Wild Challenger Turbo Two-Wheel Drive Brushed RC Truck, the 390 motor, and 7.4 volt, 1500 milliamp. Lithium ion battery, 25 amp waterproof speed control. Oh, another thing about that steering servo is there's no way that's waterproof. I didn't open it up though. I'm not going to because there's probably just a gear train in there that's a mess. Likely the only way to replace that is the entire unit for sure. I assume that there are parts for it anyway. There we go. That is reassembled in fairly quick fashion. This thing is going to break off. There's no way that's not going to break off. It's I like the front. The front is that's that's bad. That's real bad. All right. So we'll throw this on for now, just so it's. I do like that look. I would be satisfied with that. Oh, I forgot to plug in the front lights. Let's go over the top. I don't remember. I'll check the video. Does it go through there? I don't... No, I can't. It must go over the top, and then it gets pushed down in this little channel here. And then you...
plug it in like that. I'm looking forward to seeing how bright those lights are. They're kind of neat. There's a power LED in there too that I'm just noticing. All right, let's get a look at these janky suspension thingers here. Um, I don't, it doesn't appear to be adjustable shock positions whatsoever on the front or, ooh, on the front or the back. These are small screws, you guys, real small. Maybe two millimeter, maybe 1.5. Should have taken the back one off, I bet. Guess it doesn't matter. Get this out here. Holy, it's a long screw. Wow. <laughs> Take this one off here. Should I open this up? I should probably open it up, shouldn't I? I should probably look inside it, shouldn't I? It looks like the back has the ability to run dual shocks. We'll look at that in a second here. Man, those are those are not standard. You wouldn't be able to come into a hobby shop and get these. Ooh. Ooh. How come I can't get that screw out of there? You know what? I'm not gonna take it out. So this is a standard method of uh, building a shock for RC cars. So you've got this bottom shock cap that comes off and you're supposed to be able to push that off. Ooh, why not? Why won't that come off? There we go. Well, that's a positive lock, I'll tell you that. So there's your bottom shock cap. There's your spring. I believe it's anodized. It's not painted. That's nice. Here's your shock. Okay, so... No, it is not a metal shock. The cap is metal. The top cap and the bottom cap is metal. And then, and then this is just a screw. There's nothing in there to hold that. There's, that's it. There's, you can't put... Um, let's take this bottom cap off, maybe. No, I can't get that bottom cap off without having a pliers or something. I do not have pliers handy, so I will not take it off. But that is, that's your, that's your shock. Let's assemble it again here. And then this clips on. That's a very positive lock. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a shock. I'll tell you. Whew. So, yeah, it, so this comes out like that. So the only thing that's metal on this is, is just just this. Okay, cool. I guess that's enough to say it's a metal shock. I mean, the, the shock shaft is metal, of course. It's not, uh, it's not the worst I've seen, but... Screw this back together here. I'll install this back into our Wild Challenger Turbo. Here we go. That went in there fairly easily, so I'll see if I can thread that in without messing anything up. So far, just taking this apart has been worth my $40. Definitely, I think, anyway. Come on, go in. Oh, it's threaded all the way through. Okay. There we go. Put it on both sides. Makes sense, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Hmm. Feels like you could strip that pretty easily. All right, let's get this back onto here real quick. And then we'll take this out for a drive. No, before we take it out for a drive, we'll see what the manual says. Oh, darn. And the manual is the least interesting part of this RC car. There. Ooh, man, I don't like that very much. Should I pop a front wheel off before we look at the manual? Might as well. I haven't had a front wheel off yet, I don't think. 
let's pop the front wheel off here and we'll take a look at what's behind in this steering here should measure these wheels too they look kind of like standard 18th scale all right so getting a look at the steering here we got a plastic steering arm it's all plastic in here too but it looks pretty beefy i think the whole steering block seems okay you know it's not bad and that is ball bearing so is it worth a hundred dollars I wouldn't have paid a hundred dollars for it. No way. No way. I don't think so anyway. Now it works pretty good. And those, those wheels are pretty. Those are pretty wheels, you guys. Those are pretty wheels. Hmm. All right, let's peel the let's peel this off. Hmm. Don't peel off very nicely. That's actually really nice that they left the uh, plastic overspray on the body because it's going to look great after I peel this all off and you know scratches on it here we go I mean the body looks nice you know here we go oh yeah that's fun to do oh wow it's even uh, backed with white you know that's that's not bad that's not a bad looking body at all i like the colors the details are okay there's not a whole lot of weird english on it the drift racing the shark bay is that part there is probably the biggest thing about it i think it's got like a little door um, handle uh, in there too like it's not bad it's not bad you guys okay so I'm going to get some AA batteries, throw them in the transmitter, and then once the battery is charged up, we'll go out for a rip with the Wild Challenger Turbo, an RC truck from a tractor supply company. Oh, wait. almost forgot. Let's check out this manual. It literally says, truck. Truck. 14 plus ages. 2.4 gigahertz ready to race 112 scale ready to run 36 kilometer we'll check that two-wheel drive we've got our english here small parts keep out of reach of children this is what you get the monster truck the transmitter the manual that you're looking at four pins a hex wrench uh lithium iron <laughs> lithium iron battery it's lithium ion but fine um usb charger that's all standard stuff right it's got a French manual and then notice oh parts look at the parts they all have an x15 s number so oh they've got a buggy version too that's neat so I'm interested to see where the steering servo is there's transmission gears the plastic transmission gears that's cool where's the steering servo whole transmission the rear gearbox oh there's this front steering engine what a mess that is holy all your bearings are there what about shocks what do they look like i don't see them on this oh there they are so if you're going to replace the shocks you got to replace oh oil shock absorbers you can upgrade you can upgrade this with oil shock absorbers amazing metal shield shock absorber so those are the friction shocks which are junk you can get a new transmitter and oh here's a parts explosion perfect so this is the truck version here and this is the the buggy version here 
LEDs, all your screws are available, uh, your 390 motors are available, uh, extra batteries, and a speed control. The receiving plate is what they call it. Um, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Ah, here we go. Oh, what the heck am I looking at here? Oh, this is this steering this way? No, that's upside down. Here we go. I don't know what I'm looking at here. That's the front here. It's, so they have it so you're looking at the truck like like this and then it goes in like this because that's your left and your right yeah weird and then this is your chassis and your whole steering servo it's too bad you couldn't upgrade that with a standard steering servo instead of that that dog's breakfast and here's the rear which is still the same but there's something weird about the exploded view like it's a weird it says there's foams in there there are foams in the tires let me see if those are glued actually never thought that then a blank page and that's it rc just a truck Let's see if these are glued they are glued holy jumpins okay weird all right it's got some double a batteries in that transmitter we'll wait for the uh, battery to, to uh, charge up and we'll take the wild challenger turbo out for a drive okay this battery is finished charging and according to my usb power meter we put 970 milliamps into this into this battery which is a 1500 so it may have had some charge in it so let's pop this in the truck we just open these two up here and kind of wish there was a little pull tab in the top of this but that's okay and we'll stick this in like this and plug that in we'll make sure this works before we go somewhere to use it i don't like this t-plug setup much better if that wasn't t-plug but that's okay all right that's in let's pop the case on it make sure that's down there so we're not pinched there you go good that's pretty good all right that's uh transmitter on that's an actual physical power switch that's on turn the truck on that's flashing and now it's paired Ooh, steering is very slow that's a super weird steering servo. All right. Cool. That's it. So we'll shut that off. I'm going to shut this off. And then I'm going to unplug the battery until it's time to run because leaving the battery plugged in can flatten um, the voltage and damage it so never leave it plugged in all right let's go run this thing 